We just found out our daughter-in-law stole so much money from our bank account. She went ahead and attached one of our debit cards to her Apple Pay and went on an absolute spending spree. When I told our son what she did, oh boy, he was not happy. Our son and daughter-in-law have been together for two years and they live together. We've always thought that she was a very nice girl and she seems to make my son happy, so no problem from us. Our son has his own law firm that he's currently trying to get started. We're very proud of him and we're fortunate enough to help him with a startup loan. Daughter-in-law, well, she works a retail job that she's very happy with. Some time ago, husband and I were over at their apartment and we decided to order some food. Husband and I wanted to pay and since daughter-in-law was ordering from her phone, we handed her our card so she could draw the money from the account. We thought it goes without saying this was to draw an amount once for the lunch. However, daughter-in-law apparently put our card into her Apple Pay and has been using it since. We didn't notice for a few months but recently saw withdrawals we didn't even recognize. We had our accountant look into it. He discovered that one, daughter-in-law has been using our card on her phone and number two, she spent around $17,000 in total. We were quite shocked and caught her up and asked her why the heck she's been using our card. At this point, she gets very defensive, tries to deny it, and eventually said she was entitled to it. And why do we care since we haven't noticed her use over four months? We told her she needs to pay us back immediately or we're going to report her actions for theft. She apparently doesn't have the money to pay us back. We've got our son and he's offered to pay us back even though he actually can't afford it himself. This is not about the money, but more about the fact that she's stolen a huge amount of money. While we're comfortable and it took us time to notice, we still recognize the seriousness of $17,000 being stolen. Our son has completely dismissed her behavior and excused it as her being stressed. She's taken no responsibility, and we're honestly wanting to go forward with the police report, just to teach her consequences to her actions. Would we be the a-hole for doing this? What's up everybody, Mr. Redito here. So there is an update for this story, and this is a wild one. Before we hop into the update, let's check out a couple comments. Comment number one says, OP can and should do both. One, because her actions are criminal, and second, to recover her money, not the a-hole. And then comment two replies to that with this, right? If the daughter-in-law is this entitled, I have a feeling one day she won't have a problem stealing from the son's law firm or something else that could get him in serious trouble. The son is looking at things through a rose-colored in-love glass, but trusting a person like this can really ruin someone's life. Your son might be angry, but in the long run, you might also be saving him from a worse fate. The audacity of this girl, I don't care who it is, how close I am to them or how much money they have, never in a million years would I ever steal like that. I wonder if she tried to tell the son it was an accident and her phone just happened to save the card. She knew exactly what she was doing. A broke person doesn't blow 17000 in four months. They're careful with their money. I don't spend that much money on myself in three years, let alone four months. This was no accident, OP. You better press charges. Someone who steals is not a person who you can ever trust to have in your life. I don't care if it's $20 or 20000 When someone's dishonest like that and it's a comfortable thing being dishonest, you need to cut them out of your life. So those were the two major comments from the first post, and now we're going to hop into the update and see exactly what's going on. Thank you everybody for your feedback. I got many requests for an update, so here it goes. We were utter and completely shocked with our son's nonchalant way of handling this. And at a loss, we desperately wanted to fight our son, but since initial confrontation had been avoiding us... 
we decided we would take the advice and just call the police to press charges. However, we wanted to let our son know before doing so. Husband and I decided to show up at his office since he had been ignoring our calls and text messages. I know this might sound boundary-crossing to some, but we desperately needed to talk to our own son. Initially, he got angry and asked us to leave, but he calmed down and agreed to hear us out. We told him our side of the story, and to say the least, he was absolutely shocked. He apologized profusely, cried a little, and begged for forgiveness. He told us he was blinded by love. Working 14 hours a day and under the impression we've gifted the girlfriend this money. His girlfriend had apparently told him that we wanted to spoil her as our future daughter-in-law and that we gave her carte blanche to buy herself nice things as a way to welcome her to the family. And that we'd since changed our minds on spoiling her and now wanted all the money back knowing she can't afford it. She had told him we did that as a manipulative way to force her out of his life, to try to control him. He was also under the impression she'd spent maybe 3000 not 17000 He was livid and was actually the one in the end who convinced us to pursue legal action. He actually helped us call the police right then and there at his office after our talk. We then went with him home and helped him pack up all her stuff before she came home. She wasn't on the lease, living rent-free, so kicking her out was easy. We offered to stay with him for the blow-up, but he wanted to handle it on his own. From what he's told me, she did not take this lightly. Soon, our son's ex has now been pressed with charges and we're awaiting further information. Like some of you pointed out, it's a sufficient amount and she's pressed with criminal charges now. Our bank has also been informed, and we're told we'll likely get all the money back. She blew up on the entire family, but no one but our other daughter-in-law is even taking her side. Other daughter-in-law, oh boy, is a whole different story for another time perhaps, but we're now glad to officially announce that we are thief-free in this family. So there was absolutely no pity at all in the comment section for the daughter-in-law. I'll just read a part of this one because it was a rant. Yeah, uh, this is entitlement to the max. You use 17,000 in four months. That's absolutely outrageous. That's over 4,000 a month. That's not groceries and a few necessities. Oh no, that's clear splurging and advantage taking. I don't know who you are, and I don't know how you don't notice that. I check my credit card every day. Try going to the police first. At least get a police report, and you can try disputing the charges with your credit card. Good luck with everything. Sorry about this. Guys, that was an absolute crazy story, and I want to know what you would do if you were stuck in this predicament and your daughter-in-law doesn't steal 50 bucks. Oh no. 17 grand. Drop your thoughts down below, and here's the title for the second story of the day. Am I the a-hole for telling my parents off for always favoring my adopted sister over me? When I, 27 male, was three years of age, my parents, 51 and 49, adopted my newborn sister. She's deaf and learned to lip-read incredibly well. She also gets better grades and had more friends. I had a few while she was very social despite her disabilities. And my parents always called her the quote, best gift they could ever ask for. They favored her, gave her everything she asked for, and they both made a lot of money and sent her to a very nice private school. While I went to a weekly funded public school two blocks from my house. When I was 11, I was made fun of and bullied by kids in my class. And my father told me just to toughen up. Well, I went to my teacher who filed a report to the principal who didn't do much. And later, my father called me weak for going to my teacher about a bully. The birthday parties for me were not really parties, but were what? I asked them to make my favorite dinner and they reluctantly agreed. My sister received massive parties where my parents typically got her around 10 expensive gifts on top of everything else. They funded her college education in full. 
Well, they had told me to make do with the tiny bits of money they gave me for chores that I've been saving. More recently, they've asked me straight to my face why I was not intelligent, social, and successful like my sister. Mind you, I make 20000 more than her with no degree. Recently, she got engaged to a guy who, quote, I'm currently good friends with and even learned sign language for my sister early in their relationship. They held a dinner party where they openly talked about how they wished they had another golden child like my sister. They then asked me why I couldn't be like her in front of everybody. I got up and I asked them to talk to me outside. I told them that they were neglectful a-holes who never cared about me and that they were bad parents. I then argued with them further and they said that they were simply trying to make her feel better about her disability. By the end of the argument, they admitted they never wanted a son, always wanted a child that would impress people and would make them look good. I left angrily and told my best friend about it, who said that it was good that I stand it up to them. However, the rest of the family, excluding my sister, believed that I was an ungrateful, whiny little jerk who never appreciated what I had. Of course, this is after years of my parents telling them lies and after they told them a twisted version of the conversation. So, my question to you guys is this. Am I the a-hole for losing it at my parents for treating my sister much better than me for years and thinking of me less than her? What's up, everybody? Mr. Redito here. So, there's a total update for this one. Let's go ahead first and check out some of these comments because OP actually replied to some of them. The first comment says this, The entire thing is a harrowing read, but this line from the story absolutely floored me and I quote, By the end of the argument, they admitted they never wanted a son and always wanted a child that would impress people and who would make them look good. Holy crap, duck your parents, dude. You deserve so much better growing up and I'm so sorry you ended up with two absolute devils who had their heads wedged so far up their own butt. You're absolutely, unequivocally, not the a-hole. And that's when OP saw that comment and responded this. I told my sister what they said. She seemed to believe me and says that she's definitely going to talk to my parents about what they said. She's also apologized for being so ignorant to the neglect that I faced. Even if most of my family hates me, I still have one person who believes me. Which makes me feel better. Alright, so those are those comments. Let's go ahead and jump into the update. Guys, if you're not subscribed to the channel, take a second right now and support me by pressing that subscribe button. And let's see what's going on. I followed the advice to some people in the comments and sent an email to my relatives. I told them they didn't have any proof and that I was ungrateful and unappreciative for what I've had except for my parents' word, which wasn't much. I also asked why they never came to a single one of my birthday parties when I went to much crappier schools, and why I spent so much time in my room when they came to visit, something I really didn't mention in my first post. They wanted me upstairs in my room about 75% of all visits because they said they were embarrassed by me. I also had my sister vouch for me, saying they only wanted a golden child. About half of them believe me now, some still can't decide who's in the right, and some are saying that it's reasonable to want a perfect child, and that kids are nuisances, and that my parents were just 100% right. I also determined that my sister had to know something was off. I told her it would be a bit before I trusted her 100% again, she agreed and seemed surprised when I said it, though. I've looked into therapy as well as my first appointment is in two weeks. Currently, I still have an urge to call my parents because I don't want to lose them. In case they change their minds. Something else in my head is telling me not to, though. One of my close friends even told me that I should sue my parents. And that their wife's brother worked for a really good firm and that they could even help me hire them. I don't really think the neglect was that serious for a lawsuit, however. I also want to say thank you to all the people who reassured me I was not in the wrong, 
and also gave me some great advice. Have a good day, everybody, and thanks for reading this and my update. So here's a little back and back in the comment section. It says, OP, I would totally go no contact with him. They've admitted that they never actually wanted you, so give them what they want. You're no longer their child. They will never hear from you again. Comment 2 replies to that and says, I totally agree. I totally agree with this response. They are awful parents, just plain awful. How can you do that to a child? Go no contact? You don't even owe them anything. When in their old age, they come to you to be looked after? Say no. It's basically comment after comment of the same thing. Basically saying, oh my gosh, I cannot believe this. Guys, I want to know your thoughts about this story. Drop it in the comment section, and if you've ever been in a similar situation, let's hear about it. If you're new to the channel, my name's Mr. Reddito, and I read similar stories to this type of content every single day. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a wonderful day.